overall, I think it was a pretty big week. Are you, are you good? I was trying. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, just tell me to wait then. I'm I just, sorry. I'd rather wait. <laughs> Following up on Monday's episode, we found out that the school that was supposed to host the Lego first competition didn't really have a safety concern. They just double booked their gymnasium space with the basketball tournament. And of course, who's going to get special treatment? Jocks or nerds? Jocks. Predictably, the nerds got bumped. And I say nerds lovingly. I don't mean that in a derogatory way. And which one of these events was bringing in more people? The nerds. The nerds, yes. The Lego First event was bringing in approximately 3,000 people. And there were probably about 450 people going to the basketball game because I believe it was a basketball game between two middle schools that were there in Houston as opposed to a statewide competition. No one's bitter about that. No. Continuing with follow-up, why don't you tell us how your interview went? Yes. So I've been going through the interview process for an ESL company called VIP Kid teaching English to young Chinese students online. I'm now through the interview process. I have gotten that job. Um, I'm now going through the certification to actually get to teach classes, which is about a 90 hour certification. So I did as much on it today as I could make my little mush brain do. And then I'll try and do some more tomorrow and keep at it till I get it done and can start teaching. Yay. Yay. Overall, I'd say it was a pretty big week. Our photography club had their monthly meeting. Usually there's an outside presenter that comes in to speak to the club, but this month they decided to go for a more kind of back to basics presentation and it was more discussion focused. So one of the members named Ron presented and I really liked him. He was he was Definitely older. I'd say he's probably 70-ish. Most of the club is, is fairly older people. But he was really smart. He was really sharp. He really had a good grasp of how important all the technical aspects of digital photography are. You know, most of the people in the class started, like I said, they're older, so they started doing film, basically all of them. Shelby and I are, are easily the only ones in the class that didn't ever shoot film. But he has clearly recognized that digital digital photography is different than film and that there's different challenges and how important it is to know your camera and to know the gear, to know where the trends are going as far as, you know, mirrorless and things like that. I also really liked Ron. I am a photography noob. Um, I am a member of the club because I enjoy going to the monthly meetings I am very interested in photography, at least conceptually. <laughs> um, and I like seeing what the monthly theme is going to be. And I like to kind of brainstorm with Nate and, you know, we can kind of share ideas and just talk about it. It's fun. And I really like old people and I enjoy friendships with old people. So it's not unusual for me to be a member of a club with all old people. Anyways. Being that I don't know much about photography, his particular presentation was really, really useful for me. Almost everything he said was some sort of new information to me that wasn't overwhelming information. He would say something cool and interesting, and I'd look at Nate and be like, whoa, is that real? I haven't heard of that before. But it was all useful stuff. It was stuff that, you know, tools and tips that I can take and that I can practice with on Nate's camera and just useful things that any beginner photographer should know and things that are good refreshers for lifelong photographers. So I really enjoyed this month's meeting. The only part I didn't like was that I didn't win the challenge for the month. I think that I might be more upset about your loss than you are. And I'm not trying to be petulant. This isn't a thing of like, I have to win. I honestly don't think of myself as being that competitive as a person. But the theme was leading lines. 
which has a very specific meaning in photography, which means that you are using lines in the photo, a road, a bridge, cracks in the floor, anything like that, to lead from the edge of the photo somewhere, or from somewhere in the photo to the subject. Yes, it is a it is a line that is leading. It is a leading line. But it leads to the subject. I don't think almost anyone in the photography club understood that. All of them just took leading lines to mean lines, which just means basically lines for the sake of being lines, which looks great. I enjoyed the photos. You know, some people had photos of bridges. Some people had photos of kind of some yarn wrapped in interesting ways. Some people had photos of like like a blurred a blurred headlight or tail lights, you know, like his cars drive by a highway. I loved all the photos, but objectively, there were only two or three of the group of ten or twelve total that you could even reasonably qualify as actually a leading line. No, there was one. There was one, and it was yours. All of the other ones were just lines. Like Nate said, very good pictures, well taken, well edited well-framed, but they weren't leading lines. They were just lines. I would give a couple of them a pass and and usher them into meeting the criteria. But once again, I'm not even that proud of my leading lines photo. I thought it was fine. I liked it, but I'm probably a little biased on the subject of the photo, so... Being that it's your childhood dog. Being that it's my dog. So, so I'm not even that proud necessarily of my, of my work. I just thought that most of the work that, you know, won the top three spots didn't actually meet the criteria, but that's life and it doesn't matter. So there's that. It doesn't, but we definitely do have to talk about it on our podcast. Sure. So next month's theme is frames, not picture frames necessarily, but framing in photography is when you have a border or something that, that outlines the subject or points the focus back to the subject. For instance, if you had a nice picture of a building and you were kind of underneath a tree and there was an overhang of trees kind of around the edge of the photo, even if they were out of focus or even if they were backlit and they're kind of silhouettes, that would be a framing device for the building. Or... You know, if you had someone standing in a doorway and you took a photo, but you were zoomed out enough to where you could see the doorway surrounding the person, that would also be a frame. I'm excited about the challenge. I don't think I'm necessarily particularly good at it, but I feel like I'll be able to take more shots. I got the camera partway through the last series, and I think the challenge is more easily understood. So I think I have a good shot at it. I think you do, too. But enough photography. This week was our first week meeting with the praise team at our new church. We have shown interest in joining the praise team. So they invited us to this week come and meet people. And, you know, we didn't really know what we were expecting whenever we went. So we just kind of showed up and Nate had his guitar and it was definitely a different experience. But it was really neat. It was nice to meet everybody. And it was cool to get to see kind of how they all work together and how their practices go, I think it went well. I really enjoyed it. It's great to be in a musical group again. Worship is both very important to Shelby and I. They actually don't have a guitar player right now, which is unusual. Most most churches have arguably too many guitar players. So to find one that actually needs one is somewhat surprising. But we both fit right into the band. The people in the band are really easygoing, really fun people. Shelby and I generally are that way. You know, we don't, we try not to take ourselves too seriously. So I I, I thought it was a great fit. I thought so too. And I'll say this since Nate won't. Nate is a very talented guitarist. He's put in a lot of time and a lot of practice over a lot of years to become very good at it. And I have always really loved getting to see him play and see him be part of a band. And so getting to watch him kind of jam with the drummer and the bassist was, was really fun to see again because he hasn't played in at least six months. And that's a part of him that I really like. So it was fun to get to kind of see that come out again. 
And in addition to being a really good guitarist, he's a very good band member and a good player in general and a good musician. So him being in a praise team like this, I just think is kind of the perfect place for him. So I liked getting to see that again. It'd been a while. Thanks, honey. Brag. Brag corner. I think it's actually been since June since I played. So it's, it's almost been a year. Man. Yeah. And obviously I could have been playing my guitar in the meantime. I just didn't. And I, you know, other things came up. So I have some work to do to get back to where I was because I'm, I'm pretty rusty right now. But but it doesn't leave you too easily. Nobody listening to him would know that he was rusty. But band practice was good. Well, now that I've bragged about Nate, honey, did you have a fun story to tell about our evening last night? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Here's the thing about me. I know just about everything in the world. <laughs> I, I, I have immense knowledge <laughs> of, of everything. <laughs> and we were having disagreement about who makes... Girl Scout cookies. Shelby and I to were looking clear, for... To be clear, this started as a casual conversation. It did not start as a disagreement or an argument. Okay, carry on. Shelby and I were looking for a dealer for the drugs we get from the Girl Scouts, also known as Thin Mints. We finally found one outside Walmart, so we bought $20 worth of cookies. Anyways, we were discussing the general topic of Girl Scout cookies with my mother, and I mentioned that the company that makes our Girl Scout cookies here has changed. In case you didn't know, there's two big companies that make all the Girl Scout cookies. And depending on where you are, you might get one or the other. I mentioned that one of the companies was Keebler, and I think I preferred the Keebler cookies. And so we looked it up, and, and Shelby doubted me. Shelby said, I don't think Keebler makes those cookies. And, and, but I wasn't making a big deal of it, but Shelby was. So I looked it up and it looks like there were two companies, ABC Bakers and Little Brownie Bakers. And Shelby just jumped up and down and circled the kitchen talking about how, how little I knew, you know, I don't know anything no. because Keebler doesn't make these cookies. You know, what, what a dumb, a big dumb idiot Nate is. I did not say that you didn't know anything. I did gloat in your incorrectness, but I wasn't ugly about it. She was just celebrating, crowing <laughs> to whoever would listen. Listen, here's the thing. Nate knows a lot of stuff. E everything. I already said I know almost everything, basically. Yeah. Okay. I do, do not as much. This results in a specific dynamic in our relationship, which is kind of focused around Nate is right about most things almost all of the time. And I'm usually, I'm usually wrong most all of the time. So there are very few times whenever I get to celebrate being right because I'm, I'm almost always wrong. So any time that I see that I see a little a little a little shimmer of hope that maybe I'm right, I just kind of go I just kind of go crazy with it. So I I do not disagree <laughs> with with my behavior. I was kind of gloating around the kitchen about silly Nate thinks that Keebler makes Girl Scout cookies and that's so silly cuz of course they don't. And then and then I mentioned before two two companies, ABC Bakers and Little Brownie Bakers. And I read to Shelby the Wikipedia entry for Little Brownie Bakers. I said, honey, Little Brownie Bakers is a subsidiary of Keebler. And now at this point, I am completely avoiding all eye contact. I physically have my back turned away from Nate as to not show my face so that I can hide in my shame. Because of Shelby's overcompensating earlier and how right she was, <laughs> I was forced to do the same thing, mm. but even more, mm -hmm. even more so. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I was forced to basically jump on top of Shelby. Which he did physically do. Yes. 
to prove how right I was about this whole thing. Mm-hmm. And and once again, I don't I don't like to do that. It's not pretty. <laughs> but I was forced to by my wife. That's right. Uh-huh. Yeah. Now, this behavior did carry on for about 30 minutes at least. It just kind of it just kind of kept going the whole time that we were at his parents' house and then also in the car on the way home and then also while we were walking from the car to the front door and then more once we got inside to our home. It just kind of traveled along with us. I think it's just important that people know that Little Brownie Bakers is a subsidiary of Keebler. Yes, honey. My sweet, my love. You were right. I guess that was my highlight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> was Was being right. <laughs> Well, last story. I guess we'll save the best for last. Mm -hmm. Our car got crunched. I have a weekly Bible study with some guys at my work. And we always go to the same restaurant, a a barbecue place in town called CC Smokehouse. The parking lot is kind of weird. It's kind of it's it's kind of like too wide one direction. So people kind of end up making their own lines kind of higgledy piggledy. It's it's really not a huge deal as long as you kind of pay attention when you're when you're in the lot. Anyways, the guy wasn't paying attention and backed his truck pretty hard into the front left part of our of our SUV. We have a Cadillac SRX. Anyways, really pushed in the lights, broke the bumper, maybe damaged the hood, pushed back the quarter panel. When you open the door, it makes a big pop. It didn't look that bad. But everything on a car is expensive. The car is probably only worth about $3,800. So I was kind of guessing they might total it, which they did. The adjuster came out today to look at it. He didn't say much while he was there, but then someone called me later to say, yeah, we're, we're going to total it because the repairs would have been over $4,000. So it's not worth it for them, which is uh, kind of, I mean, we had thought about getting rid of one or both of our cars before. So it's, I guess it's as good a time of it as any. I'm just trying to make sure that we actually get a fair value from the company. Because, of course, they're lowballing you. You know, Kelly Blue Book value is 3800 and they offered, you know, 3150 So I have to kind of talk them up a little bit. Now, unfortunately, the Cadillac, which was crunched, is the nicer of our two cars. By a, by a pretty good stretch. So the car that we have been wanting to get rid of and the car that we make snide comments about getting rid of is is mine. And unfortunately, that one did not get crunched. Yeah, we also have a 2007 Mazda 6, which some people seem to think is a good car. Maybe some of them are. Ours is a complete piece of garbage. Yes. The bumper's falling off. The paint's scraped. We can't keep the lights working it's been one problem after another for that car. It's one of those things where anytime I even have to go get an oil change or anytime I have to vacuum out the car, we make jokes about maybe just driving it into the ocean instead of spending $20 on it. It's a bad car. It's not great. So I think we would have rather had that one get crunched or none of them. I guess none of them would be better, but yeah. Yeah. You know, Shelby and I have thought about getting an RV specifically a travel trailer. And so we're kind of looking at getting a truck. So we we may just end up, you know, getting the check for the Cadillac and then trading in the Mazda and just getting one one truck for right now. But we'll have to see. I'm sure we'll follow up more later. But I think that's been our week so far. Mm Mm-hmm. Pretty eventful. Yeah. Anything else? Nope. See See you you next next time. time.